All right, so let's talk about osmolality and osmolarity, okay? Uh, putting the os in front of these words, molality and molarity, simply means you are now interested in just the total moles of solute particles in your solution, okay? Uh, this has to do with this being, uh, uh, this type of information being something you can obtain from measurement of what's known as osmotic pressure, which we'll talk about later. But anyway, um, osmolality would just be the total moles of solute particles per kilogram of solvent. You recall molality is mole solute per kilogram of solvent. So if you just want to count the particles separately, in other words, if you have sodium chloride, okay, you know in water it's going to break up into sodium and chloride ions, right? So uh, when, you count, when you're de dealing with osmolality, you want the moles of the particles. So you're going to count the sodium separately from the chlorine. Okay, you're going to add them all up, and that will give you your osmolality. Similarly, osmolarity will be total moles of solute particles per liter of solution. Now, with respect to any one particular solute or compound that you put in your mixture, Okay, the osmolality or osmolarity is just equal to the whatever the molality is of that solute multiplied by a factor called I, and that I we call that the Van Hoff factor. So, for example, in dilute solutions of sodium chloride, for example, what, what do you think I would be? If I have a 0.1 molar sodium molar sodium chloride, okay. Uh -huh. If I have a 0.1 molar sodium chloride, okay, what would be the concentration of sodium? 0.1, what would be the concentration of chlorine? 0.1, so what's the total concentration of particles? 0.2, so what would be I for sodium chloride? What would I multiply 0.1 by in order to get 0.2? Two. So, the Van Hoff factor is essentially uh, gives you an indication of the extent to which your uh, sol your solute ionizes in water. What if you have something like HF, which only partially ionizes? It's not going to be one, right? The I is not going to be equal to one, but I is not going to be equal to two either because it's not going to be completely ionized. The value of I that you get would be your Van Hoff factor would be a number between one and two. So if you have an I that's between one and two in this case, it will give you an indication of to what extent that HF ionized in one. Okay. So just a quick check. The molality of sodium chloride in a solution that's 0.5 moles per kilogram. So this is molality, 0.5 for sodium chloride. What is the osmolality of the solution? Assume your sodium chloride is completely dissociated under these conditions. Is it A, 0.5, B, 1, or is it C, Correct answer is one. Very good. Why one? Because each sodium chloride will give you, each mole of sodium chloride will give you two moles of solute particles. So the Van Hoff factor here is two. So osmolality, we say, is two times the molality in this particular case. Your I is equal to two. What is the molar osmolarity of a solution that's 0.2 molar with respect to sodium sulfate and it's 0.5 molar with respect to glucose? You have a mixture, it's got sodium sulfate in it. So if you had a liter of it, it's gonna have 0.2 moles of sodium sulfate and 0.5 moles of glucose. Now, what do you know about glucose? Molecular compound, it doesn't dissociate. Your sodium sulfate, how many particles can you get from sodium sulfate? 
What's the Van Hal factor for sodium sulfate? It's going to give you two sodiums and one sulfate. So the Van Hal factor for your sodium sulfate is three. Okay, so what would be your osmolarity for this mixture? Is it 0 0.7, 1 0.1, 0 0.9, or 1.7? Give me a little time to think about it. What would it be? Okay, the answers. One point one, very good. Okay, so you know your stuff. So three times 0.2, right, for your sodium sulfate, and plus one times 0.5, so that gives you 1.1. Now, suppose MX is 90%, only 90% ionized in water. So if MX will give you M plus and X minus. What's the osmolarity of 0.2 molar mx? So here's a way to do this. If you have mx, it is 0.2, right? And it gives you m plus plus x minus. If I lose 90% of my 0.2, what do I do? I subtract what? 0.9 times 0.2, correct? I lose 90% of 0.2. How much of m plus would I make? Okay, uh, let's do it this way. If I were to lose X moles of this per liter, how much of this would I make? I make X moles per liter of that, right? And I'm going to make X moles per liter of that. Can you see that? If I lose a mole of this, I gain a mole there, I gain a mole there, right? If I lose two moles here, I'm going to make two moles of that, I'm going to make two moles of that. One is the stoichiometry, right? So that would be what would be my total molarity then? Your osmolality would be what? 0.2 minus x plus x plus x. How do I figure out what x is? What do what does it mean when you say it's 90% ionized? That means x out of 0.2 is equal to what? x is 90% of the original, right? x is 90% of 0.2. So x over 0.2 is equal to 0.9. Right? So what is x then? 0.18, right? Or so, well, so what is 0.2 minus x then? 0.2 minus 0.18 is 0.02. Only 10% would be left, right? So mx would only be 0 0.02, and m would be 0.18, and x minus would be 0.18. So how much would you have total? This is going to be 0.02 plus 0 0.18 plus 0.18. Okay? So it's going to be 0.38. So what would be the osmolarity of your solution? It's going to be between 0.2 and 0.4. Okay, what's our Van Hal factor here? This is equal to I times 0.2, right? So my Van Hal factor is just going to be equal to 0 0.38 over 0 0.2. What's my Van Hal factor equal to? It's 0.38 divided by 0.2. 1.9. Okay. It's not quite 2 because it's not 100% ionized. Okay.
And you should be able to show that that Van Hoff factor is just equal to 1 minus F plus NF, where N is the number of particles you're making. Okay, so it's going to be 1 minus 0.9 plus 2 times 0.9. Okay. Is that right? So it's 0.1 plus 1.8, that's equal to 1.9. Okay. Here's a way of showing that the Van Hoff factor is 1 minus F plus NF. So if you have, uh, you start off with 0.2, right? You're going to end up with, you're going to subtract one minus and uh, okay you have 0.2 going to subtract 0 0.2 times 0 0.9 which f is 0.9 okay, the fraction that is dissociated is 0.9 okay. and you're going to make 0 0.2 times f here and you're going to make 0 0.2 times f there okay so if you look at this you can simplify this you can say that this is going to be 0 0.2 times 1 minus f and to 0 0.2 times f and that's 0 0.2 times f. So your total molality, your osmolality is equal to, if you combine all of this, what would that be? You can factor out 0.2, right? So 1 minus f plus f plus f. Is that right? So this is 1 minus f, and that's 2f. 1 minus f plus 2f times 0 0.2. This is your i. That's your Van Hoff factor. Okay? So the n here is the number of particles that it breaks up. Each one would break up into. So mx breaks up into two particles. So that n right here, that n is equal to 2. Okay? And F is the fraction of the molecules, or the fraction of the molecules that are broken up. Okay. Suppose AB is partially ionized in water. If the total solid concentration is 0.5, in 0 0.5 molar AB is 0.6, what fraction of AB molecules are ionized? How are you going to do this? So let's do it this way. AB gives you A plus plus B minus. Okay. You have 0.5. And you're going to lose how much? F times 0.5, right? How much A are you going to make? 0.5 times F. And then B, you're going to make 0.5 times F. What's your total molality? Point five times one minus F plus point five times two F, right? This one's point five times two F. Or that's point five times one minus F plus two F. That osmolality is equal to how much? Point six. So this is your I right here. So 0.5. So you can say 0.5 times what's 1 minus F plus 2F? 1 plus F is equal to 0 0.6. How do I solve for F? 1 plus F is equal to 0 0.6 over 0 0.5. And F would be equal to 1 minus 0 0.6 over 0 0.5. I don't think... Am I missing something here? Let's 
number less than one. Okay. Uh, negative f plus two f is positive f. Neg negative f plus two f. Something not right here. Uh, Am I doing this right? It should be minus one or one minus. Oh, yeah. That's what I was wondering. I'm, I shouldn't be getting a negative number. Okay. So it's going to be 0. 0.6 over 0. 0.5 minus one, which is 1.2 minus one, right? which is going to be equal to 0 0.2. So what is F? That's the fraction of the molecules that are dissociated. So it's, if it's 0 0.2, what fraction is 0 0.2? 20%. Okay. Think of it this way. If you have 5, okay? What's 20% of 5? 1, right? So 1 out of the 5 is going to be replaced by 2. So you have 5 minus 1 plus 2. That will give you 6. That's a way of thinking about it. You got it? So if it, you thought it was, you made it up to be 0. 0.5, but when you measured your osmolality, it came out 0. 0.6. What that tells you then is that the, whatever it is you put in there you must have partially broken up. So now instead of just having 5 particles, we have 6 particles. Instead of 0.5 moles in a liter, you have a total of 0.6 moles in a liter. Okay, so collidative properties are properties of solutions that depend on the total concentration of solid particles. So they depend on the osmolality or osmolarity. And they do depend on the nature of the solvent. So it depends on what your solvent is, okay? But it doesn't depend on what the solvent is. So it doesn't matter what kind of solvent you have. All you need to do is figure out the total solute particle concentrations, okay? So any colligative property can be written as a constant times the total concentration of solute particles. And like I said, it's the constant, uh, it depends on the nature of the solvent. So this constant right here depends on what your solvent is, okay? So for particular solvent, colligative properties will depend only on how many solute particles you have in there. It doesn't matter what they are, what the solute particles are. So the colligative prop, four colligative properties of solutions uh, are vapor pressure lowering, okay? Freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, osmotic pressure. So vapor pressure lowering is equal to this quantity right here, the vapor pressure of the pure solvent times is the mole fraction of a solid. So here, this is your constant right here, and this is the concentration of solid particles. Here's a constant right here, and it's the concentration of solid particles, molality. Constant right here is case of B times molality of solid particles. The constant in this case is RT, concentration of solid particles is M. Okay? We're going to go over each of these colligative properties one at a time and go through them in detail. How much do we have enough time? We're supposed to, uh, we're supposed to end at? Yeah. Yeah, we have to stop. So let's just stop this and uh,